Um, in 1875, at an unspecified date, the writing of the first theosophical major work began, that's Isis Unveiled. However, they have come to New York and they've started the Theosophical Society. And uh, they're living at 46 Irving Place and HPB has started writing. Now she came down, he came down one morning and she said to him, I started to write something last night and I don't know what the deuce it's going to be, but it was nothing to do with me and she was simply acting as a, a sort of writing machine, but it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, they, it began to go at such a speed and, and such a, an enormous amount of material that they would work from two o'clock, uh, from, from 8 a.m. In, in the morning till two o'clock the following morning. And uh, HPB took no exercise whatever. She couldn't. Uh, this, this work was so sort of being pressed on her in a way. And she grew grotesquely fat. There's no other answer. She went up to 17 stone, 7 pounds. And uh, the colonel sort of said, you know, old horses simply won't do because uh, you're not going to live long like this. And he, he says that, and I'm quoting from the diary, uh, thereafter, after each meal, or perhaps ten minutes after the meal, she took a glass of water, held her hand, her hand palm down over it for a while, looked at it mesmerically, and I'm not quite sure quite how, but there you are, and then she drank it off. And she came down from 17 stone 7 to 11 stone 2 within a matter of two or three weeks. And still took no exercise, but, but she kept it down by this process, which I suppose is the rearrangement of some molecules and whatever, but it, it worked very well. And it's a sort of a, a, a physical detail which I thought was quite fascinating. Now, the thing is that these enormously long days of work um, were not really her. Uh, he, he records time and time again in old diary leaves of seeing somebody else looking out of her eyes. And I, I, I'll tell you... Um, uh, one of one of the little stories. Um, HPB was out of, out of her body, and the Colonel always knew because she looked different. And sometimes there was a female looking out of her eyes, and sometimes there was a male. Often it was a male, uh, a sort of sadhu. And in those periods, she was quite different from herself very still, very dignified, very silent, whatever, scribbling at a, a very high rate. <coughs> and one afternoon a, a lady visitor came, whom they knew, who rushed up to HPB and gushed all over her for three quarters of an hour and then um, patted her, patted her hand kissed her on the cheek, I standing by and seeing the blank despair in the male somebody's face. I conducted the lady to the door, returned to the ascetics, ascetic someone, a sexless sadhu, if ever there was one, and he turned his mournful eyes on me and in an accent of indescribable memory and melancholy, sorry, said, she kissed me. It was too much. I had to sit down. And this sort of thing happened quite o o often because on another occasion he rushed in and said, listen old horse, I must tell you about this. And the face, the, 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 the face when, when the being raised its head from its manuscript 
was of such shock horror that uh, the, the poor old colonel had to had to apologize for about the 540th time because there is no doubt about it that HPB didn't really write um, uh, ISIS. In fact, she said she herself she's nothing but a, a writing machine. Well, of course, a life like this, sort of 12, 16 hour a day, they had to have some, some <laughs> time off. And, um, of course, HPB, like Russian ladies at the time, smoked like a chimney, So and so did the colonel, and they used to sort of open the window and let, get some fresh air from New York streets, uh, which I understand were pretty rough even in those days. And <laughs> HPB would get the colonel to... Um, they had what they called play play times in the early hours of the morning, and she'd get she'd tell tales of magic, mystery, and adventure, and get me to whistle or sing comic songs, and tell droll stories, and this became a sort of mock fantasy um, fiction tale um, of the Maroney family and their descents into matter, their returns to cosmic force, into marriage, changes of creed, changes of skin, and all this in an Irish brogue. And of course it was, a, it was an ongoing saga. And the Maloney's were said to be related to the molecules, which, which I think is really rather funny. And, and, and the the fun and games between the Maloney's and the Molecules I must have been heard to be believed because it was all pure fantasy. And um, at last, HPB started calling Colonel Alcott Maloney, so he, um, he um, retaliated by calling her Mulligan. And they used to write to one another as Maloney and, and Mulligan. It, it was a, it's, it's a sort of childish in its way, and yet it was the uh, sort of relief from this incredible amount of work which they did year after year.